Hello, this is David, and I'm dictating or um, sort of um, doing my first lecture on placental pathology. And this is really an introductory lecture in which I will be going through the basic structure of the placenta and introducing you to some of the anatomical details and anatomical complications in, in understanding the placenta. So to start with, this is our fetus. And I just drew it as an early fetus. Here's his limb buds, and here's his eye pigment. And here's the umbilical cord. And the umbilical cord is in continuity with the reflection of the amniotic membrane. And that's very, very important. So this is the skin of the fetus. And here's where he's attached at the umbilicus. And then that reflects onto the fetal surface of the placenta, onto the fetal surface of the chorionic plate. And then that's in continuity with a layer that reflects back at the fetal membrane. So it's important to note that the amnion of the fetal membranes is the same layer that formed the cover of the umbilical cord, the amnion of the umbilical cord, and is in continuity, is in transition with the fetal skin. So right here at the umbilicus, there's really a transition zone. And the transition zone is, in essence, uh, a squamocolumnar transition zone between the skin of the fetus and the um, umbilical cord, which is covered by amnion. And I think that's important for a, a, a true understanding of the reflections of the layers. So, just for the sake of demonstration, let me show you what were to happen if I was to take a cross-section here. So if I was to take a cross-section here through the umbilical cord, what I would see is So what I would see if I took a cross-section here is the umbilical cord on cross-section, so I would see two arteries and a vein, and the umbilical cord is covered, and I drew some cellular detail here, is covered by amniocytes, which are these cuboidal cells, and at this point those amniocytes are in continuity with the uh, fetal skin. And so that's the reflection, and this will be the amniotic cavity. And this will be the amniotic cavity, and outside are the fetal membranes. Now, beyond that, the next layer, or the next thing actually to think about is, is that within the umbilical cord, within the substance of the umbilical cord, are running the fetal vessels. So here you have vessels, and I only drew the arteries. I didn't draw the veins for this discussion. And they sort of run as umbilical vessels at this point, and then they go into the fetal surface of the placenta, which is here. This is the fetal surface of the placenta. And another word for that, people call it the chorionic plate. And that's sort of this portion, this portion here. And so the vessels ramify in the chorionic plate. And so if you're looking at everything in cross-section, it looks like this. But if you were to look at a placenta end-on, as you do when you do a delivery, from the fetal surface, what you would see is the umbilical cord running into the placenta, and then you'd see the vessels ramifying, both art arteries and veins. And if you look at it in cross-section, what I'm showing here is these are the vessels that are ramifying and splitting on the fetal surface of the placenta. And then they dive in, because you could imagine there's some depth here, a thickness here, and then we're taking cross-sections. And they divide into the placenta proper, and they undergo various branches, first division, second division, third division, etc., etc. And these are the vessels, and they're surrounded by mesenchyme. And this will be the mesenchyme within the villi. So all of these spaces are villi. And around them, bordering the villi, is this layer. And this is what forms the boundary of the villi. And that layer is my um, syncytio cytotrophoblastic layer. Because in embryology, even though the syncytiotrophoblast and the cytotrophoblast are originally separate, by the time you have a mature placenta, they usually aggregate, they join together, they fuse, and they form a single layer. And in subsequent lectures, I'll show that in more detail. And then beyond that, so this is your syncytiocytotrophoblast going around your fetal villi. And even outside that, you have another layer, because this is what we could call villus trophoblast. Beyond that, you have some trophoblast cells that are extra villus trophoblast. And these extra villus trophoblasts line the outside of the villi, line the outside of the villi, and at some point they reflect up and go around the fetal membranes. 
And this is one of the key points that I want you to understand in this lecture. These extra villus trophoblast cells that are going around the villi are the same as the cells that reflect and go around the amnion and form what? They form the chorion. So if there's one take-home message, one anatomical nuance that I want you to understand in this lecture is that the chorion is equal in many ways anatomically to the extravillus trophoblast. The next layer that I want you to understand is these extravillus trophoblasts, when they get to the bottom of the placenta, they sort of form a line. They sort of condense up and form a line. And this is sort of trying to start to form the basal plate or the implantation site of the placenta. And so here you have your ba basal plate and as they form this basal plate they get admixed with this sort of pink material and this is not fibrin but very much like fibrin. It's fibrinoid. It's like fibrin. And so here's my fibrinoid and my extra villus trophoblast forming my implantation site. And beyond that you have maternal structures because the placenta m is is really um, the placenta is really embedded within maternal structures and so here you have the maternal decidua beyond the extra villus trophoblast and the fibrin and so the maternal vessels including the maternal spiral arterioles and the maternal veins run through the decidua and really puncture that extra villus trophoblast fibrinoid layer and supply blood arterial blood into the middle of the villus lobules and the venous blood returns from the periphery and the blood circulates like this into the into the intervillous space and then back down and this is the pathway of the circulation of, 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 of the maternal blood and the fetal blood is here so you can imagine that right here in, when we look at the most distal exchange unit, this, and I'll show this area in more detail in subsequent lectures, this is the area of maternal fetal exchange. This is where physiological maternal fetal exchange occurs. This is where the mother and baby exchange nutrients and products and gases. The only other point that I want to make in this video is, is that the placenta, uh, sorry, that the fetus and the placenta are completely embedded into the maternal lining. And I'll, I'll embellish on that further, but that the fetus and the placenta proper are fully embedded into the maternal endometrium. And at, I, in, in embryology, early on, the villi actually go all the way around, all the way around, and the, the, the sidua go sweeps all the way around. But what happens subsequently is some of the, vis the, the villi regress and so you get these sort of senescent villi and you could see them if you look at fetal membrane histological sections. So you get senescent villi here and only the villi survive at one pole. So this decidua that goes around the membrane that used to go around placenta, it's just that the placenta regressed here, we call the decidua capsularis where the decidua near the implantation site we call the decidua basalis because that's your basal decidua. And with that, I'll end the first installment. Thank you for listening.